Lachlan Meakin from Go Markets joins us live via Skype. Lachlan, good afternoon. Hi, Daniel. Busy times at the moment, isn't there? Lots going on in currencies and bond markets, keeping you busy, I imagine. Yeah, it's nice uh, having some volatility, to be honest. Um, we did see, I mean, this morning we've we've had a pretty quiet session, which is not surprising after last night's fireworks. But uh, yeah, the Aussie dollar really copped a shellacking and it's um, followed on from Tuesday. I think the the reaction from the RBA hold is, is, is a little bit puzzling how um, pronounced it was when the markets were, I mean, the, the interbank futures markets anyway, were pricing in only about 18% chance they were going to hike. So um, that real reaction to the downside is probably a bit overdone. Uh, last night, it obviously continued with uh, the risk off sentiment uh, across the across the uh, other side of the world um, and a very strong US dollar, obviously, on those uh, yields having a real spike up. Yeah, no, absolutely. So let's let's um, cross back to the US dollar. And again, it's quite interesting whether or not it was the Fitch downgrade that's causing all the problems or whether or not it's actually this huge treasury issuance that's coming up in terms of, you know, almost $2 trillion over the second half of the year. Are you reading the spike in yields on, on treasuries as more Fitch related? Uh, no, I don't think the Fitch downgrade had much of an effect at all. It was a little bit of a knee jerk when it first came out. Um, yields didn't move a great deal. The US dollar had a, a small dip and then I guess it was shielded a bit by the safe haven, uh, you know, the, the trade going into it. Um, yields really spiked on the ADP report, first of all, um, and then just a double whammy. It was, as you said, that treasury funding um, just saw that that real spike, um, the 10 year over 4% again, which uh, highest, I think, since November last year. And that really pushed the US dollar with it um, and it whacked the cyclical currencies. So the pound, the Aussie, the Kiwi um, all got a shellacking. And the uh, the yen, the yen held on. I think that was pretty much the only currency that went toe to toe with the US dollar. It was a, a pretty much an unchanged session on the dollar yen. So um, yeah, cer certainly I think the Fitch, as Janet Yellen, I think, said, is, is outdated. I mean, the, the debt ceiling things behind them. So I was certainly looking at the charts more more related to the ADP, which started it, and then certainly did that that Treasury funding really are turbocharged the, the yields up. Yeah, indeed. Um, lots of uh, commentators have been saying the the US dollars kind of had it, but it's really surprised, hasn't it, to the upside um, of late? Is that how you've read it? Yeah, I mean, it's you can see that it's still the go-to currency for for risk off, and we haven't had risk off for a while. I mean, the the markets have just been melting up. For in low volatility sessions for quite a bit now. So um, this kind of shock to the downside where we saw this, I think it was the first um, first day that over 1% down for the S&P for 47 sessions or something like that. So that preeminence of the, of the risk haven obviously helped the US dollar out. I think further upside, there might be a little bit more. Um, it's going to be really hamstrung by the, these 10-year yields being over 4%. They've really struggled anywhere above this um, in recent past. Also, um, volatility, even though we had a volatile session last night, is still pretty low uh, if you look at all the, the CVOL indexes, et cetera. And that, that's, that's going to hamstring in the US dollar somewhat as, as a funding currency against the kind of higher yielding emerging market currency. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know if it's got too much upside, but a lot will depend on the figures tonight. I think there's an ISM uh, services out of the US. Uh, another employment, some more employment data, and obviously the big one tomorrow night. Oh, uh, yeah, tomorrow night is non-farm. So we'll see. We'll see how they come out. But I think that will be the next driver for the US dollar, definitely. Indeed. We are ever de data dependent at the moment. And speaking of data. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Bank of England, um, big decision coming tonight or not all very well flagged, is it? Well, it's a bit split. It's going to be an interesting one. The markets are pricing in, I think, uh, about 66%. They're going to hit a 25 um, and a little bit past. So 33% to 50. I think it's about 30 two basis points being priced in. Um, it, they have got room to, to slow their pace uh, from June. The June was a 50 basis points. There's been some pretty promising inflation figures in the last couple of weeks, uh, especially with services, uh, which had been proven to be very sticky as coming down. So um, I, I'm going in the 25 camp. Um, what will be interesting as well to watch there is, is the vote split. It's one of the central banks where they 
make that very public how the, how the uh, members voted on the day. So it's been a 7-2 split all year, uh, to a hold, 7 a hike. Um, one of those doves has been replaced by a hawk, so we'll probably see an 8-1 split this time, but there could be a freeway split with, with some of the more hawkish members going for the 50, uh, the majority 25, um, and, and, and the one dove left doing a no change. So that vote split too, we'll, I think it'll be closely watched to see Try to guess next moves from the Bank of England. So a bit of volatility on the pound around that, that I'm, I've no doubt. We'll, we'll see how they how it pans out. Indeed. And just really briefly, um, the outlook for the Aussie dollar, for all those people that are deciding to still travel overseas, are they going to have more grief? Is there more downside to uh, the little Aussie battler? Uh, I think um, against the US, we probably haven't got much more downside. I mean, that 66 level was was big support. We we did blow through that obviously last night, but 65 is also a very big level. And, and if you see that a lot with the Aussie US, those big figures um, are very important. Um, I think that a lot of the Aussie weakness was it was the overreaction to the RBA announcement. Um, some China growth repricing, which is probably re- completely priced in at the moment, uh, and US dollar strength, which I I feel may not have too much further to go depending on on the risk obviously sentiment of the market so i, th- I think we'll bottom around here we'll see but then ne- as i said the next couple of days against the us anyway we'll we'll probably decide that with their data um if i was going to buy the aussie dollar I, I probably would buy it against the kiwi dollar rather than the us it's it's gone into that uh lower than its its mid price of its kind of mean reversion range so it, 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 probably a better buy against the kiwi <laughs> than the us dollar at the moment um but i i do i do have faith that it will hold this 65 level against the US.